very big. Too big? I'll put the top on. Yeah. And here's Lauren. Thank oh. you so much. I'm so <laughs> Cheers. Would you believe the bottle's almost done? <laughs> <laughs> to the bubble machine. Sissy's on, on the sauce. sauce. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. and welcome back to the Bubble Diaries. Thank you so much for joining me again for another champagne video. I am so excited this time as for the first time I've got a guest joining me today. So it is my lovely sister Lauren. She is going to be coming on in just a moment and we're going to taste some champagne together. So today's video is all about how the style of your glass can affect the champagne that you're drinking. So today's champagne is Moet. And I've chosen this one for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we are still increasing in budget as we're going through the months. So this seemed, sorry, <laughs> this seemed the natural choice to progress to after we had Lanson last time. So Moet is usually around about £35 in the shops and I managed to grab this bottle for £25 from Asda. So that really was quite a steal. The other reason that I've chosen Moet today is because it's actually my sister's favourite champagne. She is actually someone that who normally prefers Prosecco over champagne. I know, I can't believe we're sisters. However, this is one of the champagnes that she really does love. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get her and we shall start the tasting. And here's Lauren. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this bottle of Moet and we have three different style of glasses that we are going to taste it. So first of all, we're going to go for the coupe. And then just to show you, we've also got a flute. And the final glass is called the tulip. And this is supposed to be the correct champagne glass. But we'll start off, first of all, with the coupe. So I shall pass you yours. There Thank we you. go. And oh, better open the bottle. Right, so as I said before you got here, Lauren, you tend to prefer Prosecco. And is there a reason for that, do you think? I think... I too much in it but you were just saying maybe what you prefer about Prosecco. Yeah I think I just prefer the sort of sweeter flavour and I think do you know if someone said to me you can have only one glass this whole evening I maybe would choose champagne but you know <laughs> often have more than one <laughs> so I think it's just having a lot of champagne is too rich for me and that but I do enjoy mm. I do enjoy a glass like that 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 smell is just, just, just glorious. So I actually meant to mention a quick tip before that explosion just blew me <laughs> off course. I rinsed all these glasses just with hot water before we filmed this, as I read that doing that can remove any fine dust particles, but also any remnants of soap detergent. And both dust and soap can actually impact your bubbles and it can cause the champagne to go flat quicker. So that's just something that I haven't done before, but I'm interested to see if that makes a difference. So a little tip, rinse your glasses with hot water. So a little bit about the coupe glass. So I think when you look at it, it does just look like a sort of more old fashioned, traditional looking glass. It's a style that is reminiscent of the 1920s. So I actually bought these glasses after watching the entire Downton Abbey box set. <laughs> I also looked into getting like a silver tree to bring them out on. I haven't gone that far yet, but there was a period when I was saying, oh, that's so 1920s about everything. But anyway, that's why I bought these glasses. However, I didn't realise at that point in time that they're actually considered the worst champagne glass to drink from. And there's a couple of reasons. So one is how shallow it is. This really does not allow the bubbles to have anywhere to go. And it also, this wide rim means the aroma is dispersed very quickly and you don't 
get the full effect of the champagne. So that's a little bit of info about the glass, but let's have a cheers and have a taste and see what we think. I mean, it's nice. To me, I, I can feel that it's maybe not that bubbly in this yeah, glass. Yeah, I would agree, that? yeah. I think it, I, I know obviously it was the style, but it just, it's felt like a soup bowl. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> so full of champagne. Well, it is, is actually swimming about there. <laughs> it is actually also called the saucer. The sh a champagne I mean, I can, saucer. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think one negative about this glass is also it's not for clumsy people because it's so easy to tip it over yeah. the edge. Um, but the one positive I was going to mention is that you can really feel very Gatsby with these glasses and pretend to be Leonardo like I did. I'll insert a picture here. But I mean, overall, I don't feel like it's impacting my drinking experience <laughs> that much. I I would say it is for me. It is. I think what I like to have about what nice about champagne is the sort of elegance, and I don't feel like it's that elegant. But in terms <laughs> of the actual taste, I'd say it's not as bubbly. But I don't know if I can still taste. I can still taste the flavors. I think. Yeah, it's just not as bubbly. And I suppose if you try and nose, nose that, I'm hardly really getting mm. much of anything now. Yeah. Certainly when you first pop the pop the bottle, I feel like <laughs> I get to smell it more yes. than I maybe can right yes. now. Okay, so we're going to move on to style number two, which is probably the most famous, the flute. Don't you take that one. Thank you. So this is the style of glass that I probably use the most often. Um, although we do actually have another style of flute that is called trumpet. So it kind of goes out the way at the top. Um, I'll see if I've got a picture that I can post here of the glass. But I thought for purposes of this video, best to use the, the actual flute. Now, I'm afraid to say that in the champagne world, the flute is really not popular. <laughs> um, I read that one of the ambassadors from Dom Perignon actually described the flute as awful. I also read this Instagram post that said it was heartbreaking to pour champagne into a flute, which I feel is, I don't know, it's a bit over the top. A bit harsh. <laughs> I know, I like the flutes. But the good thing about flutes are that they have a really dramatic display of bubbles, which is what we're all about here. And interestingly, I don't know if anyone knew this, but there's apparently a name for that stream of bubbles that travels up the glass. It's apparently called the bubble machine, which I just felt like sounded like a car I should be driving or something. I said to Lauren, I was like, to the bubble machine. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> moving on from that, let's pour some more into these glasses here. <laughs> glasses then now that we've got it well I mean just look at the bubbles yeah compared to the coupe like it is like a bubble machine <laughs> they're a lot more visible and you can really see them all streaming up the glass there and this is why I like the flute I feel yeah. like you get the experience and although this is not the typical style of flute I would pick I actually don't like these glasses that much I feel like they're quite clunky <laughs> but I think the flute for me is so elegant I it's it's my personal favourite at the minute, but I've got my new glasses to try next. I feel like just even on the nose, you can smell so much more. I would agree, but what the experts say is that the, the flute does still stifle some of that aroma. That's our dad. <laughs> Doing. So a little bit of history about the flute. It apparently originates from the 1700s, but it actually didn't become very, very popular until the 1950s, which must have been after the coupe sort of started to go out of fashion, the flute came in. I mean, I feel like it's just glorious in any glass, but... Yeah, I definitely prefer this though to the, to the coupe, just like the look, the taste, the bubbles. I would agree. I think having them side by side, you can really see the difference. Yeah. I definitely feel the coupe tasted flatter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that funny? Well, this is information that people need. This is why we have, this is why I'm here. We are forcing ourselves to do this experiment. People need answers. Yeah, I mean, I can just see, like, 
just out the corner of my eye, I can see the coop and you actually can see this almost doesn't look like champagne anymore. It looks like white yeah. wine and that yeah. obviously is still bubbling away. And honestly, the difference on the nose, I actually wouldn't, you know, as I said before, I am more of a Prosecco drinker, so I don't drink champagne that much. But just even on the nose, like I feel like I can smell so much more. You're actually right. There's hardly anything coming from the coop. <laughs> Is it dad? <laughs> dad! Oh my god, our dad is watching us. <laughs> dad! Cheers! Dad, we're actually recording! <laughs> Just doesn't get it. <laughs> he says, is this for your blogger, Graham? <laughs> anyway, so, so far we've concluded the coop. No. I'm sorry, coop. I mean, I love them, but Apparently they are more of a gimmicky glass. You shouldn't really mm. serve champagne in them any longer. I read that you could use them as a dessert. Yeah. I still feel like I'd maybe use it for champagne, but I am recognising that it's not the best glass. No, that's lovely. Mm. Really nice in this glass. Really enjoyable. <laughs> could sit here for hours. <laughs> and even though this glass, like as you were saying, they're a bit clunky. <laughs> not a funny word but you know even though this isn't maybe the most stylish glass I still think it's superior to the coupe. Teddy agrees. <laughs> Hold on. Okay so we're actually going to move on to the third glass now which is my new glasses so I literally have not <laughs> I literally have not had one sip out of these. I've only rinsed them with the hot water, like I mentioned. I'm going to just quickly show you the box that they came on. Sorry, <laughs> that they came in. So these glasses are from this make, Rydell, if that's how you pronounce it. They were £45 for two. So quite pricey. For two? Yeah. But these are supposed to be the best glass for serving champagne. So the reason being... We have obviously the nice stem which you can hold, which is the same with all of the glasses. <laughs> but you also have a wider bit here that concentrates back in at the top, which means the champagne has a space at the bottom there that allows the aroma to be re released. But then this curving in at the top concentrates it perfect for nosing. Whereas with the flute, it's just straight up and it supposedly sort of compresses the aroma. The other thing I meant to mention about the flute is, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, I think it's when you pour the champagne immediately, you might get a sort of tingle of the carbon dioxide in your nose. Apparently that's called a carbonic bite and it's worse in a flute than with the tulip. So we shall compare it with that. So yes, seasoned champagne drinkers and experts are saying that the tulip glass is far superior to the flute and definitely the coupe. So let us see. Here's the bottle again. Right, I shall pour yours first. So I guess what we're looking for here is to see if we can get a stronger aroma. I mean, it does look lovely when I see it there. In I'll pop some more in yours. The twins. <laughs> right. What are we noticing? As a pure first reaction, I'm not sure I'm noticing that much, but see, I actually think I am. I actually you? think that is really strong. You maybe have a more sophisticated nose than me. Hmm? No, I actually don't. I don't. I don't have a great sense of different flavors, but mm. I think I'll compare it. I mean, obviously this has been sitting. Yeah, that's the. So only... shall we? Shall we pop a bit more in the flute and we'll see? Yeah, I probably. I don't know if I can smell anymore. I think it might taste a bit better though. Right, if you you quickly nose them and see what you think, and I'll do the same. Do you know what, actually, when you compare them side by side, freshly poured, yes, I think you can smell more from this tulip. Oh, there's Teddy. But Sorry about this, everyone. Teddy, please sit down. <laughs> so, yeah, I think if you're, I suppose if your objective is tasting, 
hurts nosing. <laughs> Good point. What's the sitting with Anthony? Then maybe these are superior. However, and do you know what I've just actually remembered is that I had a glass of champagne in the Shangri-La Hotel in Paris and they served it in this kind of glass. And I think that's maybe from memory, the only time that I've seen it being served in a glass. Well, obviously that's in Paris, so they probably are serving it in. Because so traditionally you would just see it in a flute, wouldn't you? Definitely. And this is the thing that I feel like in bars, restaurants, all over the UK, we you'd serve it in a flute, and you might mm. even think, "What on earth if you got served it this in this in a bar?" I would agree. Like I, I don't know whether that's that. our perception in the UK or it's something that we are just not that familiar with. But I, it was not something that I really truly considered probably until now. But I mean, I for me the aroma, mm -hmm. <sighs> and I feel like it's staying longer as well. You know what we were saying about how the with the flute. With the bubbles. Just with the aromas. I'm not the sure aroma. about the bubbles. I see, would say it's probably less bubbly. See, I agree. I think the bubbles are less in this glass. So we're just saying, we actually think the bubbles, like you can see the difference. The yeah. bubbles are going, the bubble machine here <laughs> is better than in the tulip. And I guess, I guess it's what you're looking for in a champagne glass. Mm. I don't think the bubbles are lasting as long in this type of glass. I think the aroma is more pronounced. Mm -hmm. But I think we're losing the bubbles. And these are lovely glasses. Like the the rim on these are, are really wide. Yeah, it's a very wide rim. I noticed. It's quite nice. I guess that's it's good. Very it's, elegant. It's planted. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like, I I just feel like it is quite sturdy on the base, even though the stem is very thin. Mm. I know that's the only thing. <laughs> no. Well, I was actually honestly scared to run them under the tap in case it just snapped. Yeah. Yeah, I think it just depends on what you're you're looking for. Obviously, if you're tasting and nosing, then mm -hmm. clearly this glass would be the best. But I don't know. I think if you were just celebrating and having champagne, then a flute is lovely. Having tasted them side by side, there's more bubbles in the flute. Yeah. In my opinion. Bubble queen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Bubble queen. Yeah, you're definitely more bubbles in the in the flute. So, I mean, the coupe is just not even in the equation in this for the me. Coupe, I know. So, are we going to come to a conclusion? What was your favourite glass for your drinking experience today? Do you know? I actually think I might be voting the tulip. Oh, because I like the bubbles. However, that's probably not maybe my number one priority. I know you do mm. really like the bubbles and I know, um, you know, if a champagne is flat, I mean, I don't like flat champagne either, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I feel like maybe I have a slightly higher tolerance to it not being quite as bubbly. I would say I think I like this, but then maybe that's also the white wine drinker in me that I, en I probably enjoy holding a, a wine glass more than a flute. In general. I was actually just thinking that because Lauren drinks more white wine than me and I was wondering whether for me the bubbles is such a huge part of champagne and I feel like for you it's not as much. No, I love my white wine. I love it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Red, rosy, white, doesn't matter. Um, so I feel like maybe that is also why my vote would be on this one. I'm, I'm gonna stick with my flute and I know any champagne connoisseurs are going to be saying... Oh, heartbreaking. <laughs> I know, that's heartbreaking. They're awful. But for me, this like this is still bubbling away there. Yeah. And I'll show you the tulip. Barely really a bubble there. Whereas this has still got those streams. You can see them. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> so I, to be honest, I enjoyed all of the glasses. But I really didn't enjoy the coupe, I'm sorry to say. Oh, that's okay. I won't buy them then. <laughs> I think, I think my, I, I would go flute, tulip, well, I like the coupe, but mm. flute, tulip, coupe. This, I think this does feel very elegant drinking. Yeah. For me with the coupe, it, it just was swishing about too much. It was, <laughs> it didn't, it seemed to lack both flavour and the bubbles. Whereas I feel like with this, I was getting a really intense flavour. With the flute, I was getting the bubbles. So 
I feel like they could make you like seasick or something. Yeah, we bit. It just was swishing about too much. Like big like bowl. And yeah, I, I just didn't. I, I I do appreciate though. Obviously, you know the is it in the Great Gatsby Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, that? yeah. That is obviously such an iconic photo, and you know that style it really fits the style. But yeah. I think in today's world, world, I would prefer yeah the other two. But the champagne itself is absolutely lovely. It's beautiful, yes. I mean, it's one of my favourites, I'm sure you've already said that. So overall, we did have a kind of different preference today, but I hope that has given you some information about when you're picking some glasses, what are you looking for from your champagne? And maybe that can help make the decision for you. So I've actually got another bit of information I wanted to share with you. When, whilst I was reading up about the bubbles and the glasses, I read about this study that was happening in the University of Reims, which is in the Champagne region. And they have looked into having etchings or dimples in the base of the glass there, as this can help the bubble machine sort of <laughs> send those bubbles up through the glass. So basically what they've done is use a laser to make these little marks in the glass. And they have looked at what number of these marks is optimum. There's a bee in here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's still out the window. So basically the reason for looking into these etchings is because when you pour champagne from the bottle into the glass, that is the CO2 being released. Once once the bottle's opened, the carbon dioxide is free, free. Um, so with this air that's trapped in these little etchings, the gas that is in the champagne reacts with it and it sends these streams of bubbles up the glass. So they have discovered that the optimum number of etchings is around about 30. They found that, I think it was between 50 to 80, it was far too high. Although it caused a really dramatic display of bubbles, it meant that the champagne went flat very fast. They also found um, on the other side of it that 10 etchings was too small. It, it did last, the bubbles lasted for a long time. However, they didn't get the intensity that they were looking for. I'm not sure whether this is an ongoing study, but it was something that I thought was worth mentioning that they've looked into ways of really encouraging those bubbles from your glassware. So that's interesting. We'll see if we get any more info on that one. So we're coming to the end of our little video today. I really hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully that you've learned something about the glasses that we've tried today. And thank you, Lauren, for being a guest. Thanks for I hope you'll me. come back on the Bubble Diaries. Definitely if there's champagne going. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you've got any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Please subscribe if you like the video and you can also follow me on Instagram at the Bubble Diaries underscore. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Have a great day and cheers. Cheers. Bye -bye.